hello there. If you like the video in the next two seconds, then you'll get Pele in FIFA 20. And if you're new around here, please consider subscribing and turning the notification bell on as well. Every single year in FIFA, without fail, it's always important to get a good start. Now, I say this full well knowing there have already been how to start FIFA 20 videos. I'm aware that a lot of the people at the capture event have already explained some new features and new details about FIFA 20 to you. But this is a list of 10 essentials that I think are vital to understand so you get a good start in FIFA 20. Some of these you may know already, but some of these you may not. Now, number one, I've literally already done a video on this myself funnily enough, and that is explaining how to identify whether or not you're getting a walkout in FIFA 20. Because of course, when early access drops, we want to be skipping as many packs as is possible that we're opening, so we get maximum efficiency of generating coins and working out whether or not the player is a good player or the player is a bad player. Obviously, if it's a bad player, we want to skip the pack. If it's a good player, it's nice to watch them walk out, you know? Now, if you don't already know this, I'll leave a link to my video in the description, but I'm also going to tell you right here, right now, the orange lights flashing at the top of the tunnel will not be in sync. One of them will be broken. The left-hand side will pop off, and the right-hand side won't pop off at all. So keep an eye out for it when you're opening packs. If you see only the left central light popping off as opposed to both of them, you know it's a walkout, so you can watch the end of the pack and see who you get. If it's not, probably best off skipping it. But as I've said, I will leave the link to the full video in the description. That was just a brief explanation. Uh, I do it much better over on that one. Point number two, which is a huge point in this year's FIFA, I reckon. If you want to have fun and enjoy the game and you don't really like the competitive aspect of what foot has become, go to the friendly section and you can play loads of fun game modes, including the likes of swaps, where you swap players with your opposition before you go into the game. Mystery ball, which is boost upgrades during the game, which give you like five star skills on every player, 150 rated shooting on every player, 150 rated pace, etc, etc. There have been other videos explaining Mystery Ball, but it's a super fun game mode to try out. There's loads of other cool games as well, but I would recommend if you are genuinely trying to maximise the amount of fun you have from FIFA, play these game modes. They're super, super enjoyable. Point number three is when you start the game, use your loan players that you're gifted from EA at any opportunity that you get them so you're not spending coins on players. For example, in Seasons and Rejectives, which I'll go on to in another point, once you get to level 1, you have the choice of either picking Jaden Sancho on loan, Virgil van Dijk on loan, or Vinicius Jr. on loan. They're the cover stars of FIFA 20. You can also see right here that once you get to level 5, you get Eden Hazard for a 9-game loan. You want a Virgil van Dijk for however many games EA give you him for, at the start of the game, Get him! Be wise with your coins this year, guys. There are plenty of ways to make coins. Don't spend as much if you don't have to. Use the loan cards where available. As I mentioned where the loan cards are from, Seasons and Objectives. This is a huge new addition to FIFA and FIFA Ultimate Team. Seasons and Objectives have also replaced the catalogue. Now, because there is no catalogue, everyone is on a level playing field. People could have racked up ESFC points over the years, which would give them advantages for coin boosts in game, for loan players for extra squad slots, etc. Now everyone starts from scratch, which is brilliant. And just by playing the game, no matter what you're doing on FIFA Ultimate Team, you get XP points, which then give you greater rewards. You can unlock coin bonuses. There's so much stuff to do on Season and Objectives. And don't forget to claim your rewards when you get them because they will help you at the very start of the game. Any small additions and bonuses to your club that you can get will be useful later on down the line. Point number five. Now, this is something that might be taken for granted or something that might take you a little time to work out. But in your club section of when you're building a squad, instead of replacing every player like we used to in previous FIFAs with square or X, you can now just go R1 to club and then sift through your club filters that way and then put the players into the team like that as opposed to manually removing the player, then manually adding the player in again. If you just go to your club section, you can then press LTRT on whichever position in your squad you want changed. And it's a much more thorough and quick way to change players in your squad, to do SBCs, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to manage your teams. Point number six, TIFOs and themes. There's so much more customization now in FIFA that you can basically brag about how good you are before you even get into a game. At the start of FIFA 19 games, if you had the players like Matthias, name 
Neymar Ronaldo, people in the stadium would show a massive banner, but unfortunately, it was only for a few select players in FIFA 19. In FIFA 20, you can actually put your own banners and stuff in the stadiums, showcase how good you are, playing the game and unlocking TIFOs and themes, which I think is ridiculous. It's another way of bragging. The Golden Goat looks phenomenal. I know it's 500 foot champions wins. I worked it out, which would be like something 16 to 17 full 30 out of 30 weekends until you get it, which if you think about that mathematically is crazy. That is mental. I would suggest it for like 50 foot champions wins as opposed to 500. I think the reward structure system, whatever is in place for foot champions wins, should be a little better than having a golden goat picture in your stadium before you start the game. The next point, another important point if you want to make coins at the start of the game is invest. Invest in any player that is good for SBCs, invest in any player that isn't already a wants to watch because when wants to watch cards come out, their normal cards will no longer be in packs so their price will naturally rise. Invest in players that you feel like will have high demand when the game comes out, for example Saint Maximin because he's a five star skiller in the Premier League and he's French. There are so many good players that you could be investing in and taking your time to think about who I should be investing in and buying at the start of the game because their price then skyrockets. I remember seeing 90 rated Rude Hullet at the start of FIFA 19 go for 1.5 million coins. Three and a half weeks later, he was 5 million coins. So there are so many opportunities and chances for you guys to turn your small amount of coins into large amount of coins just by playing the patience game. And then on top of investing in SBC players, actually completing SBCs at the start of the game, all the way up to the advanced SBCs where you can earn yourself a 50k pack. Because fingers crossed from the rewards, you'll be able to get good players that you can then sell on. Now I think I've covered everything in terms of menus and objectives and stuff. Now I want to give you some gameplay tips. The first gameplay tip that I feel is essential to understand before you start FIFA 20 is the double tap pass or the dink pass as I'd like to call it. It sets up the ball on a little bounce manually whereas before in FIFA 19 uh, it, was, it was randomly generated. If you press X X as a pass, then the player now dinks the pass to your other player, which sets up for some crazy chances. Flicks over the head, first time volleys, everything. Gameplay wise, it is a brand new mechanic, so it's going to be broken. If you learn it and master it, you'll be scoring some outrageous goals. I'm probably showing some examples in the background, but it's literally just a double tap pass and it dinks the ball. No matter what player you have on the pitch, any single player is capable of it. Passing attributes come into play or how accurate it's gonna go. At the start of the game, if it's a new mechanic, it's usually broken, so use it wisely. And then finally, the last essential point I think you should be considering is the setup touch. Now, if you don't know what this is, another brand new mechanic in the game. And having used it a lot, I can say that it's kind of balanced in the sense that it takes a long time to perform but if you do it correctly, you have set yourself up for an even better goal scoring opportunity. Now I should actually explain how the setup touch works. So you perform it by pressing R1 and then moving the right stick in the direction you are facing. So effectively the player you're controlling just rolls the ball out in front of them away from their body so they can reposition themselves in order to produce a better shot, a better pass. In the background, you can just see how good it is. Matt HD Gamer did one of the best set up touches round the keeper I have ever seen. He sent to Stegen flying and it really just is a, a cool new feature. Hopefully it will remain as balanced as it currently is. The reason I'm calling it balanced is because as I've said the animation takes a long while but if you perform it correctly you've smashed it basically. If you perform a setup touch and then a green timed finesse, apparently that is the best possible shot on the game. So bear that in mind. I've shown you some great examples of setup touches. Zidane, albeit I'll probably never use him on FIFA 20 until the very end of the year, using the setup touch with Zidane and then the finesse shot at the capture event was broken. It was incredible. It creates so many more different opportunities. It diversifies your attacking play. Please bear it in mind, especially on top of the already new skills that have been added to FIFA 20. They give yourselves the best chance of winning games. And at the start of FIFA, it's always nice to win more games than you lose, especially when you're getting to grips with how the game goes. So I'm gonna run through that again. It's R1 and then the right stick in whatever direction you're facing. If my player's facing that way, I want to be pressing the right stick that way so it just rolls the ball out ahead of them. If he's facing 
that way. I want to be pressing the right stick that way. So it's kind of like a foot roll, and instead of using L1 and then the direction perpendicular to where you are, it's R1 and the direction in which you're facing. And believe me, it creates great opportunities to score. Ladies and gentlemen, if you found those 10 essential tips useful for you, please do leave a like on the video. As I say, if you're new around here, subscribe because I am on the road to a million subscribers and any help towards that would be greatly appreciated. I really hope that you've taken some advice from this video, even if a majority of the tips that I've told you, you've heard before from another YouTuber or somewhere else on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon. Adiós.